morning adventurers. Today we are still in Boulder, Colorado, and we heard about this famous tea house that's near the downtown area that we're on our way to go check out right now. But stay tuned guys, because the story of this tea house is going to blow your mind. So the story of this tea house, it's called the Dushanbe Tea House. I think that's how you pronounce it because it was originally built in the city of Dushanbe in Tajikistan. Uh, and then in, in 1987, they deconstructed it and then shipped it over in hundreds of crates over to the U.S. to here in Boulder. And then they reconstructed this amazing tea house. Yeah, I think it took them like 10 years to reconstruct yeah. it, but still, it's insane. this handy little timer so we know exactly when the tea is right. I, I love when they do that. So I decided to be a little bit adventurous today. Our server recommended the tea called Pu'er tea. It's from China and it's a really unique kind of tea that I'd never heard of. Apparently what they do is they would leave the tea outside or bury it underground and they would just cover it in the dirt. So it would kind of uh, ferment. So every tea, just like wine, has a, name, or a date on it associated with it, which is the date when they started fermenting it. The one that I got was from like a 2002, I think. <laughs> so let's give it a try. It's <laughs> interesting. That is an interesting tea. <laughs> I can tell you right off the bat, it tastes like dirt. <laughs> it tastes like it's been fermented in the dirt, no doubt about that. It's not as like, you know, it smells pretty pungent, but it doesn't taste as pungent. You know, it's just like, you get kind of hints of earthiness in it, but not as bad as I thought it would be. I think it's kind of funny, the difference in our tea colors. Mine's nice yeah. and light, and it's super dark. Yeah, this one's almost red. Some yeah. people, I think they call it red tea. Yeah. She went with a black tea called Russian Caravan. Russian I can't remember exactly how it described it, but the, it should be pretty, you know, not yeah. as hardcore as mine. He said though that if you're a coffee drinker, it has a lot of the same, or it touches on the same notes. So, figure I like coffee, and I'm not the biggest fan of tea, so maybe this is the best way to go. It just tastes like hot black tea. <laughs> you don't have the refined palate yet. Sorry guys, I am not a big tea fan. I mostly just drink chais or whatever if I get tea, but I mean, it's good as far as tea goes. Does it smell bad? Oh God. I promise it smells worse than it tastes. It smells like a really old funky house. Yeah, for sure. It just smells like my grandma's basement. I think that's what it is. You love it? <laughs> I love it. It's very interesting, very unique. Okay, so I think we figured out what this tea tastes like. It's definitely like, you can taste like a cow field, or like a cow patty, or even like cow manure, like fertilizer. It is 100% a cow patty yeah. in tea form. It tastes like a farm. Mixed with yeah, Like I, I can I mean, taste the hay. It tastes like, it tastes like a wooden barn and dirt and a cow yeah. and... It tastes like a Chinese farm. The food has arrived and it looks magnificent. I got the uh, Greek scramble. So, you know, scrambled eggs, tomatoes, some feta. I think there's olives up in there. Looks really good, smells amazing. What did you end up going with? Oh, that looks awesome. I can't really remember, Mexican chile, like chile, I think? Yeah. Um, but it has like, well, eggs obviously, I think there's some chorizo and it's covered in mole sauce. I mean, it tastes like magical mole nachos. It's yeah. awesome. Gotta get some of this feta up in there. That's the key. Oh, yeah, got a little bit of everything there. Whoa. That's got some strong flavors. I love feta because it's like super flavorful cheese. I'm not a huge fan of olives, but I'm trying to get more dishes with olives in them because I'm trying to, you know, expand my horizons a little bit. But it works really well in this because it's, there's not a ton of them and it makes it, gives it this really nice salty quality to it. It's really solid. Now, we are hiking up to the Flatirons, which is a pretty um, well-known, I guess it's like rock formation in the mountain, like right next to Boulder but we're on a 
pretty thick. Oh snap, I didn't even see this. <laughs> I didn't bring my ankle brace, that was a bad idea. Oh, okay, well maybe we won't go up this way. Maybe we'll do the baseline trail. Yeah, but we might need to do that. the ultimate goal is to just see them in all their majestic glory and maybe yeah. get some good pictures. They're but... pretty iconic. Yeah. So I think we're gonna get some good shots of them. Can you guys hear it? You think they can hear it? Yeah. You guys, for some reason, we're always uh, caught off guard by how hard it is to breathe <laughs> when you get up, when the elevation gets high. We spotted them. There they are. We're close. Yeah. Very close. They're very majestic. I can smell them. <laughs> what happened? Something flew at me. Something flew at you? It's fine. It's cool. Keep it cool. I'm one with nature and shit. Check this out. We just stumbled on like a bunch of uh, rock formations. <laughs> hey, buddy. You're a star. That's awesome. <laughs> Check this one out. It's hard to even wrap your head around how this works. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. Guys, I've never seen so many rocks on a trail. This, is, this doesn't even look like it's, a trail. <laughs> it's just like a boulder pile. Because we're in boulder, I get it now. <laughs> Legit rock climbers up here. <laughs> this guy's going for it. Should we probably try? Yeah, let's give it a go. Yeah. This is as high as we're gonna go today, but it's <laughs> the view is pretty immaculate. Yeah. I mean, it's not that much higher to the top. Right? Yeah, so there's kind of the top of one of the flat irons right there but we don't quite have the stamina for it today. <laughs> yeah. Also, we might have started hiking at like 4 p.m. Yeah, but this view alone was well worth it. That's, that's just stupid. Jeez, <laughs> uh, that sucker's coming for us. Was it a bee? Dude, I can still hear it. We saw this road when we were hiking, and so I decided to go driving down it. But there's, I guess, a lake way back in here that maybe it'll have good views, but so far, this is pretty awesome. Super windy. Hey, guys. <laughs> This has got to be one of the best views we've ever seen. This, this is incredible. So yeah, check this out. Good. 
So we're back at our Airbnb, made it back in one piece. We've just been chilling and editing the vlog for a couple hours, but it's all done, it's encoding. But anyways, tomorrow we're gonna do another uh, hike. It's gonna be more magnificent than any of the other recent hikes we've been doing, I think. The views are gonna be insane. But uh, we're also, uh, a couple vlogs back, we got, we ran into a musician that we were really big fans of just randomly while we were uh, road tripping up to Colorado. And he invited us to his show. He's just playing like a small show for like, you know, 100 people tomorrow. So in our next vlog, we're going to do do that after the hike, I think, probably. Yeah. Pretty so exciting. we were going to do a big old hike. And it turns out I think everything's like iced over still, even yeah. though it's April. Um, yeah, so it'll be a nice little easy hike and then a show in the yeah. evening. And that'll, that'll be our last day our here in Boulder. Day in Boulder. Good night, adventurers. We'll see you on the road.